Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. We only had four drivers in action this weekend, including the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Michigan, Trans Ams in Nashville, and Dirt Midgets in the Midwest, and Cars Tour at Hickory Motor Speedway. We also had a chance to sit down with both Grant Thompson and Cole Denton in this week's Spotlight interviews. We start with the NASCAR Xfinity Series, New Holland 250 at the two-mile ultra-fast Michigan International Speedway, where Sheldon Creed qualified his number two wheel and engineering Richard Childress Chevrolet in 11th. Sheldon finished stage one in 12th, stage two in 21st, but raced his way back to an 11th place finish and currently sets 13th in points one spot below the playoff cut line, but is going to need a win to make it with only five races left in the regular season. Up next for Sheldon, Watkins Glen International on August 20th. And you can catch all the action at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the USA Network. Anthony Alfredo was also at Michigan in his number 23 Dude Wipes Our Motorsports Chevrolet. Anthony qualified in 20th, was setting 18th at the end of stage one, raced his way to six at the end of stage two, earning some valuable stage points, and eventually brought home a top 15 finish in 14th. We caught up with Anthony right after the race for his post-race recap. Not a bad day at all here in Michigan for our dude wife Chevrolet Camaro. It was solid. We scored stage points, finished inside the top 15, and it's always good when you can take the car home without a scratch on it to make it better. So thank you to my guys. Appreciate all the support. Up next for Anthony, back to the road course at Watkins Glen on August 20th. Connor Mozak was in Nashville, Tennessee for the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix on the streets of Nashville. Connor qualified fourth in his number 28 Open Eyes Camaro. We caught up with Connor right after the race. Hey guys, ran uh, the Trans Am race in Nashville this weekend. Uh, it's always a great weekend to be there for the Big Machine Grand Prix. Um, fortunately, we didn't get the win again this time. We were really close again. I uh, started fourth, uh, really should have been on the pole, but had our lap taken away in qualifying as the black flag came out right as I was finishing my lap. Uh, but they disallowed it and we didn't get to go back out uh, when some other guys did so started fourth but uh, we were able to take the lead by like the third corner and we pretty much led 90 percent of the race uh, we started falling off a little bit at the end and uh, the leader got by us and then uh, we started closing them uh, closing back in on them right before the last caution came out i feel like we were going to have a really good shot at them when we went back green um, but they decided to call the race and it ended under caution so didn't get a shot back at him. I was a little, um, I made a little mistake that let him get by me. Um, so I was pretty disappointed in myself, but uh, I feel like I could have held him off, but I uh, wish we had another shot at him. And I uh, feel like we had good speed again, just need to turn one of these into a win. So we'll be back uh, for the next one at Watkins Glen in about a month or so. Connor captured the Young Guns Fast Lap Award and the chill out, keep cool move of the race. Up next for Connor. Arkham Menard Series at Watkins Glen on August the 19th. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have our first of two Spotlight interviews, first with Grant Thompson. So stay right there, and we'll be back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, this is Colden, and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. I had a chance to sit down with Grant Thompson. Here's a segment of that interview. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Race Face Spotlight with Race Face driver Grant Thompson. Grant, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, Rod. How about you? I'm doing perfect, man. Um, for those of you that may not know Grant, and I can't believe that there's anybody out there that doesn't know Grant, <laughs> uh, but he's 16 years old. He's from Mobile, Alabama. Um, he's been driving race cars since the age of what, Grant? I want to say about six. About six years old. So he's got 10 years of experience. And uh, 
We don't have a lot of time. So Grant, we're going to get right into the nuts and bolts of this. You just came off of an amazing weekend up in the Northwest and ran the Idaho 200 uh, with uh, Racing Dynamics and Travis Sharp. Um, tell us a little bit about the race. I'd like to know a little bit about, you know, what it took uh, logistically for you and your dad to go all the way out to, to Montana and spend some time in Idaho. So um, give us a rundown on that weekend. Well, you know, so uh, this is my first time in the Midwest racing for Travis Sharp with Racing Dynamics. They're a, a really professional team. We, uh, When I ran in California a couple of years ago with Mike Nick, Travis crew chief for me a few times, and uh, we were really well together, and uh, he wanted me to come up to Montana and run a few races with them. And, uh, you know, over the last few months, we got to work with each other and build something. And, uh, you know, the past two weekends – we just had a really good race. We showed up, looked at the track the first day, and a uh, really nice facility, quarter mile race track, and uh, practicing her pretty well. We we adapted the track really fast, and um, actually qualified fifth. Had a six car inverse to start outside pole in the feature, and uh, just kind of shot out the cannon. We were had a really fast race car. The top groove was was a lot faster, in my opinion, than the bottom, and we were just able to kind of get away from the rest of the field and it was i don't want to say it was a two-car race but we got out front and then mainly the kid that has been racing there since he was little was right there with us so we had a really good race and uh me and travis were really well to the whole race just uh figuring out where i needed to be where the where the car needed to be for the tire wear and uh you know ended up making a few adjustments at the halfway break we were a little tight through the center and uh, got it freed up to where we could actually get to the gas a lot sooner in the second half and uh, ended up having a really hard fought battle to a solid second place finish. So I was very excited about that. I was shocked at how well we ran. It was my first time with a new team and uh, I, I think we had a really good race. Well, I, I would say that you guys were almost, I don't want to say dominant, but it was a two car race. It, it was for sure. You know, I mean, we, we led a lot of laps. The 55 led a lot of laps. It was just back and forth the entire race. Yeah, you led a race high 97 laps. And the thing <laughs> that impressed me was you raced very, very clean. Your first time there, you know, you don't want to make a bunch of enemies up there, but you raced a very clean race. Um, we'll we'll kind of leave it at that. I, I, I shouldn't say that. I felt like you kind of got moved um, when he passed you for the lead. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't something that wrecked you but again you'll remember that the next time you go back up there i think and then you know that's the thing i talked to travis about that he's like look man you, you came into his territory this was your first time here right. you just wanted to race earn these guys respect and i, th I feel like that's what we did so. no you guys did awesome absolutely awesome so i do have one question how the heck are you going to get that big trophy home <laughs> you know i was standing beside it after the race and i was like God, this thing's huge. And my dad's like, well, it's either we ride, you, I'm going to have to buy a plane seat for it, or we got to ship it back in a box. And I was like, hey, how about this? How about we ship it back in the box so I don't have to sit by myself? Because uh, that thing was huge. I mean, it was, it was about up to my chin, and it was just whoever made that did a really great job. It was a huge trophy. Yeah, I'd have to say that was one of the more impressive trophies that I've ever seen. So let's stop. let's switch uh, directions here a little bit. You've got some um, outlaw late model races coming up, hopefully with Sotex Motorsport. Are you looking forward to that? Absolutely. We, uh, Colin Alexander, the owner of Sotex Motorsports, approached me a few months ago and was like, "Hey, you know, do you want to you want to race it one race and just see how you do?" And uh, we went to Pensacola. We qualified like tenth in it, and we ran the top five the whole race and um had a really good race and then the next night at mobile we qualified fourth out of five and finished third there was five i'd say five of the best outlaws there were that night and uh you know we're just trying to work something out i think i think it's going to work out pretty well he's going to let us drive it a few times for the rest of the year and you know possibly the derby to next year right. it's a really good car you know it's a bmf car so it's it's a really good race car, and uh, I think I think we can work something out. Well, I think it's awesome, Grant. So if you want to keep up to speed with Grant, check him out at grantthompsonracing.com. 
You can follow him on social media. So Grant, thank you for being with us. And with that, we're going to go back to the show. Good luck on the rest of the year, Grant. We're headed for another commercial break. And when we come back, we'll have our second spotlight interview with Pasagoula's Mississippi young driver, Cole Denton. We'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Hudson Bolger and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. I had a chance to catch up with young Cole Denton on his magical drive to capture an INEX National Championship. And here are some highlights from that interview. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Tonight, we're going to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Now, that's not where this young driver's from. He's from Pasagola, Mississippi, but we're going to Atlanta Motor Speedway, and I understand we're right outside of turn four, and we've got young 12-year-old, just turned 12 years old, Cole Denton. Cole, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. We're uh, sitting over turn four at Atlanta Motor Speedway at the uh, condos. Well, I would have to say that in all of the interviews that I've ever done, this is probably the coolest one um, as far as the backdrop. I can see the speedway out the out your uh, out behind you, so that is awesome, man. How did you pull that off? Well, we've been staying here um, for every summer for the past three years at the condos um, at a turn four, but uh, we have it for these next couple weeks so we can go to Chris Motorsports Park. And uh, we were supposed to be going to Atlanta today, actually, but they canceled it. Oh, they did. Well, let's get right into this unbelievable, amazing season and this journey that you're on chasing a national championship. So I'm just going to give a real quick recap here so that the viewers know exactly what you pulled off this year. It started with the Winter Nationals. You're the champion from the Winter Nationals. You won the Spring Nationals. Then you won the Furious Five Championship, and that was at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Then you win Thursday Thunder Championship, which I know was a big deal for you because you've really been trying to chase that one. Um, so you've got those four deals. Now, I'm going to give the statistics here. 30 wins, 12 seconds two-thirds, only one-fourth. So one time that you've raced in 45 starts, you've not finished on the podium. Cole, can you summarize this amazing season that you're having? It, it's really been amazing. I mean, before I'd have maybe 10 to 15 wins, but not 100-point wins. So this is really amazing to be winning all these national events. And um, to win Thursday Thunder was the big deal that I've been dreaming for years to win Thursday Thunder, and I finally got it done this year. So it's been a really amazing season with only one non-podium finish. That That is amazing. Now, let's talk about the Thursday Thunder, since you just kind of glow when you talk about that. I can remember you winning the, the first race on Thursday Thunder. And, and us talking about, oh, my gosh, I got a Thursday Thunder win. But then you go out and you win the whole Dakum thing. Uh, how cool is that? It was That was awesome. I was super excited to just get one win on the Thunder Ring. But to win four times and pull off the overall Thursday Thunder championship, was that was really amazing. So let me ask you, what what are you doing different this year that's making you so – just a dominant force every time you show up. Well, really, the past few years I've been getting better, and me and my dad have been getting better at adjustments, and um, we've had some help learning, and I finally got to where I help him make the adjustment to go out and do better. So we've really been doing amazing on that, and uh, it's been making our car work really good so I can drive it the way I like it. Well, I'll tell you what, I think your dad should win like the national crew chief, father, you know, your mom is so involved with everything that's going on. The whole Denton family is into this and, and it's just this amazing ride that you guys are on. So we don't have a whole lot of time left in this interview. So I want to talk about this national championship, what your 
insight is to that and what you've got to do so that when the season's over to be crowned the national champion? Well, really, I just have to get a top two at nationals and hope that my biggest competitors don't beat me. So I just, I cannot afford to wreck out. I have to do, I have to get a podium in order to keep defending and maybe win the national championship. So it's going to be really, really, really tough to uh, get it done, but hopefully we can. And um, the national event will be in a month from now. And at your favorite track, Atlanta. One of my favorite tracks. One of yes. your favorite tracks. Okay. Well, I think I think you've got a pretty good chance of winning that. So for those of you that want to stay up, keep up to speed with Cole, you go to ColeDentonRacing.com. You can follow him on Facebook at Cole Nation Racing. And Cole, we want to wish you good luck. I look forward to interviewing you in a couple of months and calling you the 2022 National Bandit Bandolero champion. Cole, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's Race Space Spotlight interview. So now back to the show. Good luck on the rest of the year, Cole. I know that that national championship is going to be yours at the end of the year. Well, we're headed for our last commercial break. And when we come back, we'll check in on Caden Honeycutt and the Cars Tour throwback makeup race at Hickory Motor Speedway and Jesse Love slinging some dirt in the Midwest. So we'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Jake Wallman and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Caden Honeycutt was at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Cars Tour 276 after the race was rained out last weekend. Caden was in the number 45 throwback paint scheme honoring modified driver Perk Brown. Let's check in with Caden for a race recap. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt. Uh, we just finished up at Hickory Motor Speedway last night uh, for the makeup race for the Throwback 276 in the Car Stewart Lay Mall Stock Series. Um, what an amazing race for us, honestly. Uh, started seventh, uh, made our way up to the top three pretty rather quickly, um, ran second the most, most of the night. And uh, when it was time to go after the rain delay, I think it messed up our car a little bit, got a little bit too free, and uh, unfortunately was had to settle for third. But um, if people followed us the whole season, they would know we had an amazing run this time. Last time we were at Hickory, we started 25th and finished 7th and struggled all weekend. Um, just a major improvement. It shows how much we've worked hard um, from my family, my mom and dad, uh, Autos by Nelson Motorsports, RNS Race Cars, Marcus Richmond, everybody helps me on this deal. Um, solid rock carriers um, and just all all of our partners that have stuck with us we had a first time we've had a race that goes uh good goes in our way so um big improvement we're really really excited for ace next weekend for ten thousand dollars and uh, already started off with the second half of the season uh with the top three so it's a good momentum going into ace and hopefully for the rest of the year and chase after a championship so thank you to all of our sponsors and we'll see y'all at ace next weekend up next for Caden Honeycutt, double duty this weekend. The Cars Tour at Ace Speedway on Friday night and the Camping World Truck Series at Richmond Raceway on Saturday. Jesse Love was at I-55 Speedway in Peavely, Missouri for the Power Eye National Midget Series Iron Man 55 in his number 84 Mobile One Chad Bolt Motorsports Midget. We caught up with Jesse to get his take on the weekend. Hey everyone, it's Jesse Love. Just got back from Peabody, Missouri. Uh, first time outdoors in a midget in two years for Chad Boat Motorsports. And overall, a really fun weekend, kind of knocking the rust off, getting back in the swing of things and uh, kind of re relearning a few things too. And overall, had really great speed. Uh, we went quick time and uh, overall just had two great qualifying performances and uh, car was really fast went forward in our heats and uh, overall just needed to uh, make a few less mistakes in the feature to be in a position to win but uh, still walked away with a top 10 on the Ironman 55 night so um, decent weekend all around a ton of speed so I'm looking forward to uh, going back in a midget next time and, and making a few less mistakes and being in a position to win. Up next for Jesse Arca Menard Series at Watkins Glen on August 19th. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include 
Cassidy Hines returns to her number 3C super late model at Colorado National Speedway on August 13th. Casey Klein will be at Irwindale Speedway for the hot summer nights pro late model race with Nate Clower Motorsports. Brody Moore will be at Colorado National Speedway for the Challenge Cup 150 pro late model race. And Grant Thompson will be back at Five Flag Speedway for the Outlaw Late Model event with Sotex Motorsports on Friday night. Hudson Bulger returns to Chris Motorsports in his Can-Am Byron Outdoor Superstore Legend car. Cole Denton will be at Chris Motorsports Park going for 12 wins in a row in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandolero. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.